Hi, I'd like to welcome you to the Boffin Window Show. My name is Ron Curtis, and we're pleased to have with us tonight Armando Gallo, author and photojournalist, and he has put together a wonderful book called Genesis, I Know What I Like. I'd like to welcome you, Armando, Hello. to the nice show. To be here. And I'd like to take this opportunity at the beginning to thank you for myself and all Genesis fans around the world for putting together such an absolutely incredible book. And uh, I guess my first question would be, what prompted you to put together a book on Genesis as opposed to any other band in the world? Well, it's a long story, but I'll try to be as short as I can. Okay. Uh, I was living in London uh, during the late 60s, early 70s, and uh, Genesis was one of the bands that I was looking out for. There were, we were around, the 19, around 1970, there were lots of many good bands mm -hmm. that were starting this so-called progressive rock. People that were coming out with intelligent music, intelligent arrangement, good stories. And uh, I went to see uh, a band called Van de Graaff Generator, which was one of my favorites at the time. And the uh, Genesis were opening the show for them. And that was January 1971. And they, they blew me away, mm -hmm. in a way, because they were so special, and uh, so special at the same time, uh, they were that were finding hard to come through to an audience because they were so original as well. You know, so I followed them through the years as a journalist, writing reviews, doing interviews with them, you know, and, uh, and following each step of their evolution, they became one of the most attractive uh, band for a writer to write about, you know. Mm -hmm. So many, and some journalists think they're a bore, boring band, but maybe, maybe they, haven't, they haven't seen the band <laughs> or they haven't talked to them. Uh, right. and, uh, but I think once you get involved in a, in a special band like that, you really get hooked. Right. And uh, they always gave me an opportunity to write always good stories about them through the years. And uh, when, then I moved to California in 75 and Peter Gabriel left the band and, uh, and there were so many uh, uh, readers of the various magazine I was working for, you know, they, you know, they wrote hundreds of letters to me asking me, why did Peter Gabriel leave? Mm -hmm. So I had all these memories, I had all these pictures, you know, and, uh, and, and uh, plus the band was going on stronger than, than ever with a trick of a tail and wind and watering, you know. So I thought, why not put in together a book? On, on a band, on, on this type of band, which uh, its band has been around for uh, for 15 years. And they're you so know? very visual. Exactly. Anyway, that it would be a exactly. Thing. Plus, plus, you know, the band had come out from a very uh, uh, traditional and strict uh, uh, English uh, private boarding school, right. which is not the right way to start to go into the rock and roll business, you know. And uh, it's very stifling. In that exactly. Type of no, they, 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 and and that was interesting to investigate that how what made them. Uh, it was a friendship amongst four people that uh, got them to uh, write music together and uh, and come out with their own uh, brand of music. Really, you know, they never accepted compromises and uh, right. they always believed in doing things themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that thought was a beautiful story to, to tell. It was a struggle, determination in wanting to become the best band in the world. And uh, and I thought would. It, in a way, it was good for me because writing about Genesis, I could write about my memories of English uh, a music scene that I witnessed from 1966 to 1975 when I moved to California. It was like remembering all that period. So indirectly, I was writing about my memories, but at the same time, I was writing about a band that was really uh, worthwhile writing about. Do you think that it was perhaps boredom that caused so many English bands to really try to produce music that was, as you say, more intelligent as opposed to just basic Beatle-type rock and roll that had existed up to that point. Do you think that um, it was perhaps <coughs> more of an attitude that the band had that made them want to really put together music that I guess had not been around up to that point or that had been yeah. just attempted by other bands at that? Could have been bored, but I, I, I think that, uh, in a sense, the Beatles started really a lot because they started uh, something very special and getting a band together, a band of, of friends together, a group of friends writing music. Mm -hmm. And uh, until then, there was only solo artists and, and there were the Shadows in England, you know, right. they were very big, but they were a backing band of uh, Cliff Richard, really. Mm -hmm. The Beatles started a new way uh, uh, of, of writing music together and uh, uh, living, living together, going on tour together, you know, and uh, doing vocal harmonies. And the uh, Genesis came up 
with something even more special because I think their music really could reflect the, the old classic and, uh, and, and they were writing songs uh, of today's way of life. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, were, they were looking for always for new time signatures, you know, uh, all, always new way, new original ways to put the music across. Uh, that's why sometimes it's not that easy to tune in to one of, uh, of their albums because you have to listen twice or three times. But one, right. once you really get hooked right. in, you know, you can really appreciate the effort of someone. It would seem that um, most critics who would review records and concerts, etc., I guess maybe it's because they have uh, little time on their hands, but they will mostly listen to a record once and try to review it. When it would come down to any sort of a progressive album, as you said, you cannot listen to it once. There's so much, there's so many ideas and so many motivations behind a piece of music by, let's say, Yes or Genesis or Van der Graaff, yeah. that you do have to listen to it more than once. But most critics, at least today, would try to really categorize and really knock down progressive music. Uh, there's specific words that they like to use when they're describing that music today. Uh, they call it pompous, pretentious, self-indulgent, that it's not really out to, uh, I know it's ridiculous, they're, they're not really out to entertain an audience as much as they're out to entertain themselves. Uh, what's your opinion on critics that uh, really write it off as just being... I, I think know, there are people that are maybe too busy in what they're doing. Maybe they have to go and see one concert every night, mm -hmm. you know, and they have to write the reviews late at night or early in the morning, you know, uh, they have half an hour to write the review and sometimes they haven't got really time, maybe. I hope is, is that the reason. I think they haven't got time to get really involved in, in, in a band. I found material to write a, a book this big on a rock, on, on, on a rock band and, uh, and this book hopefully will help anybody to enjoy Genesis music better and I right. think every band of that type uh, should be dealt with uh, in, in this way. You can't really expect to uh, go and see a band like Genesis and, and, and uh, go back, write the reviews in half an hour and, and that's it. You know, uh, you can't really get into it. Right. You know, you have to do your homework a little bit. Right. And uh, so they, it's very easy to dismiss a band as pompous and self-indulgent, you know, uh, and... I hate that word. <laughs> I, I, thi I think it's sloppy journalism. Right. I don't know. Yeah, they, they just seem to treat one record as another. You know, they really don't seem to distinguish between different kinds of music. I guess they're in a hurry. They have a deadline to meet. Uh, this article has to be in the paper tomorrow, so I'll listen to this record once and just write something really, really quick. And I think that a lot of bands are really not given their due by, by critics because a lot of people mm -hmm. who don't have money to just go out and buy every album that looks interesting will rely on a critic's opinion. And I think that uh, these critics have been somewhat detrimental to a lot of these bands because they really yeah. don't treat them the way they should. Exactly. Know? But, you know, if I, if I read a review that is really uh, dismissing a band and so on, I usually I don't, I don't take any notice of it, you know. You, you, sometimes I go out and look for the album. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> and Do the uh, opposite. Exactly. Right. You know? Because it's very easy to talk about a, a, a band that is very popular at the moment. You know, it's very easy. For instance, the Pretenders uh, right now, they're very big. Uh, uh, they went straight number one in, in England with their first album. They've been doing very well in the States. And all the crowd is excited. You know, you go to a concert, you know, you get excited as well. You know, and uh, it's, I suppose it's very easy to, to write a good reviews on a band that is up and coming straight right. away. You know, right. but a band that has been around for 10 years, 12 years, 15 years. Genesis recorded the first album in 1967, right? right. They've been around for 13 years. Mm -hmm. They went in the charts in England, in the, in the single charts in 78, right. 11 years right. after the first <laughs> single, right? And uh, uh, people don't understand why. Uh, I suppose some, some, some people, some writers get a bit scared. They don't understand why this band is still going on. Uh, they have a, this in 